Okay, it's great to speak today with Sarah Hartman, Executive Director at the Ironman Foundation. Sarah, how, how are you doing? Good morning or good afternoon, Gary. I'm doing it's very good. well, thanks. How are you? I'm, I'm good, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Well, uh, it's been a while since we saw each other. Last time we did was Endurance Exchange in, in Tempe. The world is obviously very different since January. January, of the year. completely different situation now, um, but always lovely to see you. And uh, <laughs> well, Likewise, very much so. So maybe as a starter, can you tell us a bit about the the Ironman Foundation, how, how you guys are structured, uh, and also how you're connected to, to the Ironman group? Sure. So the Ironman Foundation is the charitable arm of the Ironman group and all of our different endurance sports brands and events. So that's Ironman, Ironman 70.3, the Rock and Roll Marathon series, etc. And it's our mission to create positive, tangible impact in all the communities where our events are held by awarding grant funding and supporting volunteer efforts. And I would say in a normal year, uh, we would be you know, on track to awarding around $2 million USD to about 1,500 different organizations worldwide. Um, again, we're, we're supporting charitable endeavors inside uh, the communities where our events are held. Um, and you know, when disasters strike, for example, we will also um, start a humanitarian relief effort campaign and, and try and provide immediate support um, to those communities. So obviously, uh, this is not a normal season. And, you know, in March really started to pivot all of our programs around uh, providing support to our communities in the wake of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. So how, how has that worked then? So obviously the past few months must have been particularly challenging. Um, maybe there have been some opportunities, so it'd be good to talk a bit about that that too, because as you, as, as you know, it's all about adaptation, isn't it? That that speed of response. But I'm guessing obviously with the loss of events as, as a kind of core aspect of your activity, the 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 essence of charity and philanthropy in general has have been pretty fundamentally impacted. Absolutely. Uh, I think challenge is the right word, but as endurance athletes, we're always up for the challenge, right? And and drawing from the 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 mantra, anything is possible, you know, we've had to learn, as you said, to adapt. This whole chapter in life, I think, is a masterclass in adaptation and being able to pivot and change and be creative and learn quickly and move, move, move. And so I, I think as a foundation, um, one of the most important things that we can do is try and stay on mission, try and meet our obligations to support our communities. And that really has been the true north for the Ironman Foundation through this time. Um, you know, in a normal season, we would have already been to, you know, dozens of events and awarded you know, millions in grant funding and executed service projects. I, I think that's one of the hallmarks of you know, the work that we do, trying to create this tangible experience where you may be an athlete or a donor who supported the Ironman Foundation and our charitable endeavors, but we wanna also provide an opportunity for you to actually be part of that change or shake the hand of the person's home who you're rebuilding following a hurricane, that there's something very unique and tangible and special about those types of experiences. Um, we might be building bikes for kids. Um, we might be at the races supporting you know, our athletes. Uh, none of those things are happening right now. And so how do we, how do we replace um, that give back and that philanthropy. And so the answer has really been about pivoting a, a program that was developed last year called Iron Aid, which yep. was originally uh, envisioned to be a program where athletes who work in the healthcare industry have the opportunity to fundraise specifically for medical related causes. And so this year we said, you know what? Everybody's an Iron Aid athlete. You don't have to be in the medical industry. Everyone's raising funds and support and awareness for the Iron Aid COVID-19 support fund. And uh, thanks to the generosity of athletes and donors around the world, we've now 
Um, we just went through our third round of grant funding. So another uh, 40 organizations, health related organizations receive support. That's over $300,000 in grant funding that's gone out to support these programs, which run the gamut from, you know, feeding the hungry in South Africa to providing PPE to frontline workers. Um, the list of needs uh, goes on and on. And I think that's a, a major lesson for us right now. Yeah, is that yeah. as, as the pandemic continues to unfold, um, no matter what happens, and and we don't <laughs> we don't have any certainty really about what will happen, except that the needs are going to continue to increase, and they'll change. So with with obviously athletes um, fundraising, that that sort of uh, activity that the athlete does, they I'm guessing for the majority in a previous previous normal year they would do that via their 70.3 or full distance or rock and roll race so are you seeing a willingness from athletes to to fundraise over and above obviously doing events so that that willingness do you think that that has increased or is has always been there and this has just given an uh, an outlet for those individuals do you think because the, the the kind of cause aspects of, of of racing particularly within triathlon isn't something that is always front of mind I think a lot of people are thinking very much about I want to complete this race and I suppose it's particularly the case for somebody who's doing a lot of Ironman races over the years um so do, do you do you feel there's been a shift there in terms of the the, the psyche and, and individuals want to to, to fundraise I do but I, I will also say that our our core community of uh athletes are stronger than ever it, it has been an extraordinary thing to be a part of um, going into this, as I said, we wanted to, our true north is that our communities continue to be supported through the pandemic, through disasters, you know, side note, um, I, I don't mean to be glib, but when it rains, it pours, right? Like in Northern California, devastating wildfires, same in Penticton in Canada. And right now we're, we're watching the news to see what happens with Hurricane Laura in Texas, Louisiana, and, and uh, in the Panhandle of Florida. So the needs are, are, are always present um, and ever emerging. Um, we have a, a core group of athletes. Uh, they're part of a program called Team IMF. It's a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising program where they receive an Ironman or Ironman 70.3 um, event entry and in exchange, they fundraise for our grant programs. And uh, that fundraising is, you know, tied up in their Ironman journey and, you know, culminates with actually doing the race. And so the true north for, for that team has been to keep them connected and mm. to develop ways to continue to create an extraordinary athlete experience, which is everything that Ironman is about. And mm. so um, I'm so pleased to say that not only have, have we kept our team together, but we've acquired new athletes who I think through the development of the Ironman and Rock and Roll Virtual Race Series um, mm -hmm. are racing. Um, you know, we now have almost 170,000 athletes around the world registered for both the Rock and Roll and uh, Ironman Virtual Clubs. Um, it, it is just extraordinary that they're finding a way to keep their fitness and challenge themselves, but also for us, thankfully, be part of our Team IMF and Ironman Foundation experience, whether it's the Thursday team meetings or the group rides, or uh, we now have a, a fundraising challenge coming up in September, which yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. really gathers the forces, you know, um, yeah, yeah. and and we're able to to really provide some pretty unique times, you know, that that you could pull up on a Zoom on Thursday evening and have a one hour chat with Paula Newby Frazier or with Marinda Carfrey and Timothy O'Donnell, or with Mike Riley. Like that's that's a once in a lifetime experience where you know we're looking for ways to keep the community together, but also really keep them informed of the work that we're doing. And I think it all harkens back to one of our mantras, which is race for more. Right. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. especially with triathlon, it's sometimes considered a very self-involved sport and you do a lot of solo work. Um, but when you can turn that race into changing people's lives, you know, crossing that finish line takes on an entirely different meaning. 
Exactly. And I suppose that's definitely where the service projects come in, as you say, before race day or leading up in during race week, you know, that, that work that they're doing, house building and building bikes and, and those kinds of things. Yeah. We will come on to the virtual challenge in a second. So with the support fund grants, so your Iron Aid COVID-19 support fund grants, you mentioned that you've just done the, the third distribution. So do you have a, a, a line of, of grant applications? I'm guessing this is pretty big because obviously a number of organizations are, are, are under stress financially at the moment how yeah. do you sort of see this a bit of a snowball and, and continuing we expecting more dispensations down the line yes we we are committed to keeping the the funding stream going um right now applications are open for the fourth round uh at ironmanfoundation.org slash iron aid you can find all of our information on the site there um, that application window will close on September 30th. And those are for the grants. Um, I should mention that there are several other pillars to the program. Um, one is Operation Iron Aid Face Masks. So this is kind of a cool story. And um, I think I mentioned earlier that I think one of the, the really um, cool opportunities coming out of the pandemic uh, is to find partners where we can leverage resources, come together and and get more done to support uh, people through these times. And so, as you can probably imagine, we have some unused race shirts in our <laughs> warehouses. And so um, between Iron Man and Rock and Roll, they very generously uh, donated those to the Iron Man Foundation. And we uh, received a phone call from one of our very devoted Ironman and Ironman Foundation athletes. His name is Mike Kane, and he runs operations and supply chain for a company here in the States called Framebridge. And he said, we're repurposing part of our factory. So they make, they frame art. So you upload the art and they frame it and send it to you. And so they have acrylic and lots of stuff inside their factory. And, and they said, uh, he said, we're repurposing part of our factory to help meet needs. We're going to create face shields, acrylic face shields out of, you know, the acrylic for our frames. And can we do anything for you? And I said, could you sew non sterile face masks out of, out of race shirts? And two days later, I had the prototypes and we have been off to the races. So 50,000 shirts will be turned into a half a million of these masks. Wow. And they're going to organizations all over. Um, Arizona Firefighters Association, for example, like all, all of those people on the front lines, you know, are wearing these masks. And one story that I really love uh, just happened last week in Nashville. So uh, the name of the charitable program at the Rock and Roll Marathon series is not the Iron Man Foundation. There's not a lot of brand crossover there. The program's called Rock This Town. Mm -hmm. yep. Rock This Town, a program of the Iron Man Foundation, same mission, creating positive impact in the communities where the rock and roll events are held. And so uh, we have a whole ambassador team for the Ironman Foundation in Rock This Town, and, and two are local to Nashville, husband and wife team, Ryan Kinder, who's a Nashville singer-songwriter, and his wife, Heather Kinder, who's the reigning Mrs. Tennessee America. Mm -hmm. And uh, as part of the Rock and Roll Virtual Music City Challenge, where we've challenged runners to uh, run 32 miles over the course of August, mm -hmm. uh, 32 being the number of honky-tonks on the Rock and Roll Nashville course, um, Rock This Town said that for every runner who signed up, we would donate one of these face masks to the Nashville Rescue Mission, uh, and they serve the homeless population in Nashville. And so we're up at 8,000 masks going to Nashville right now, nice. uh, which has been a, a cool story and I think really rings true with, with our uh, mantra of service through sport, commitment to community. We're finding a way to create impact through sports. Um, and I love that face mask program. It, it continues to be um, really successful. And, and in addition, we also have a, a nutrition program. Uh, obviously, as uh, you know, the economy and, and its challenges and people are furloughed and you know, food insecurity is becoming a greater and greater issue. And so we provided funding to all of our race directors so that they could connect with their community and fill food banks um, and, and try and make a difference through Operation Iron Aid Nutrition. So um, I think all, all in, it's now about 2.5 million people who've been served through the Iron Aid program just over the course of the past five months.
Wow, wow. And the fact that you can repurpose a jersey, like to make 10 face masks per per, per t-shirt, I think is, is is just fantastic. Do you, do you have to be quite careful, I guess, where the branding goes? So we see if you've got the, the, the branding over the heart and where that fits over the mouth and, and, and so on, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> and so in terms of the, the virtual challenge, maybe chat through about that. So that's the, the Iron Age, is it 140.6 virtual that's challenge? Correct. So the Iron Age. Rock and roll was August, so this is September, is that right? This is September, yeah. but we also have a September challenge for rock and roll, so I'll tell you about okay. both. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Iron Aid 140.6 is a 30-day challenge during the month of September. Uh, it's free to participate, and what we're doing is dedicating 140.6 cumulative bike and or run miles to the Iron Aid COVID-19 support fund. So you register for the challenge through your Ironman Virtual Club account, mm -hmm. um, sign up for the challenge, and uh, the platform using your device will sync your mileage for uh, the month of September. Uh, additionally, if people wish to fundraise, they can. It's totally optional, and all of those funds will go to the Iron Aid COVID-19 support fund. So we can continue to give these grants and make masks and fill food banks. And uh, we have given the donors for this um, this opportunity the ability to say where they want their donation to go. Do they want it to go to food banks? Do they want it to go to youth programs? Because we know kids in particular uh, are really, you know, needing a lot of support during this time. Or, or would the donor want it to go to something medical related, more PPE research, that sort of thing, or wherever it's needed most if they don't want to make a decision. Um, and what is super exciting is that, you know, we have different fundraising zones and our Ironman group partners have really stepped up and helped us support um, that initiative with a lot of cool prizes and swag. Who doesn't like swag? Um, so, you know, zone one is, is $140 and 60 cents. If you donate or hit that amount, you get a great prize package that includes um, Curad is making some new Iron Man branded K tape. Um, okay. so that's part of the package along with face masks and that sort of thing. Um, when you hit the second zone, you get um, an Iron Man Foundation branded uh, hydration vest, which comes in handy uh, out mm -hmm. on the long training rides and runs. Uh, third zone gets you the new uh, Norma Tech by Hyper Ice Hyper Volt, the massage tool. And then the grand prize uh, top fundraisers are getting new pairs of Hoka One One running shoes and custom nice. sunglasses from Roka. So um, big thanks to you know the ongoing support of those partners. And uh, the fundraising has already started. We're already over a thousand people participating. Um, we couldn't be more excited about that. And it's easy to, again, it's easy to sign up. It's at ironmanvirtualclub.com fundraising is optional and, and they'll give you the link when you complete that, uh, that setup. Um, we are also offering um, our uh, uh, Zoom rides. So it's called the transition zone. Mm -hmm. And we did this earlier this year uh, for another fundraising event uh, where people from around the world, when, when it was time to run a ride, would, would hop onto Zoom. And you're having conversations with, you know, people across the pond and around the world um, made some incredible new friends and, you know, strength that really strengthened the community. So, you know, you could get on and, and hop on with a, a ride led by Timothy O'Donnell or Sarah True or, you know, Ben Hoffman or Matt Russell, or um, I, I'm not sure if we're into car fray, you know, Rini just announced that baby number two is on the way. So we're not going to make her necessarily lead a ride unless she wants to, but uh, you know, that's lots of fun for people to get involved. Um, and then I mentioned also that we have another challenge uh, on the Rock and Roll yeah. Club too. So uh, it's called the State 48 Challenge. And Arizona was the 48th state in mm -hmm. the US. And so it's really themed around our courses at the Rock and Roll uh, Arizona Marathon and Half Marathon. Um, and for the community portion of that challenge, uh, you may be familiar with an incredible athlete named Tommy Rivers Pusey. Tommy Rivers um, was the men's champion at the 2019 Rock and Roll Las Vegas Marathon. He's won mm -hmm. Rock Arizona multiple times. He is also an accomplished Ironman athlete. Um, and tragically, earlier this year, uh, he was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. 
And so runners and athletes around the world have really been rallying around Tommy and his family um, and helping to provide support through um, a recovery fund. So you can donate to that fund and, and, uh, and help Tommy and his family. And so uh, because Tommy is based in Arizona, um, mm -hmm. Rock This Town, the charitable you know, program of the Rock and Roll Marathon series will donate a dollar for every runner who signs up for the State 48 to help Tommy. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very cool. So it's interesting, isn't it, that you, you, you're you supporting individuals, as you, as you say, through to communities, uh, through to, I, I suppose, just that, that and building that community. So that, that, that does seem to be a crux of what you do. Um, and uh, I suppose the final question if you like we could go, I could go on for it this is fascinating I can go on for it <laughs> <laughs> but um in terms of where we go from here I mean so for, we've we've been asking brands we talked to race directors around the you know the longer term prospects for the endurance sport category going forward so obviously the relationship between charity uh fundraising and and events has been so so key we haven't had events but but you've adapted so do you feel that you know, virtual seems to be a great way to bring new people into into the sport. So we would expect that to continue at least, if nothing else, as a as a, a part of the funnel to to get individuals racing again when when restrictions restrictions are lifted. Going forwards with all of this, how how optimistic or positive are you about about philanthropy and fundraising in general? I think that that would be really interesting to get your perspective on that because you, you seem really upbeat. Obviously, it's been a real blow, but you do seem really positive about where this is going and the community and, and the momentum that you've got behind you. I, I do feel uh, positive. Uh, yeah. and I think that we have to. Um, in nonprofit, uh, it, it's... <laughs> It is sometimes challenging to be that way. We're a scrappy, nimble bunch. And, you know, as I said before, this chapter is, you know, a real masterclass in adaptation and change. And now more than ever, we have to be inventive and creative and, you know, brainstorm our way through how we fulfill our mission. You know, how are we going to keep athletes together, create an experience where they understand and and can bring others into the community and rally around supporting each other and our communities through this time? That to me is a very exciting opportunity. Uh, virtual race platforms have have meant the world, I think, not only for new athletes, but for those who are missing their whole race roster, right? This gives them that opportunity. There are people qualifying for world championships. It's it. While we are not together in person, we are together virtually and, and um, continuing to fill, fulfill that mantra of, you know, tangible impact, service through sport, commitment to community. And I think, you know, uh, Mandela, you know, has his famous speech about sport having the power to change the world. And I think for us, we have this incredible opportunity to lift people up through sport. And while this is an incredible time of fear and uncertainty, the best thing that we can do is be good humans and look for opportunities to work together. And, you know, I gave that one quick example of the face mask program and how our partner FrameBridge so generously stepped up to make the masks. I, I will also say that um, our nonprofit partner, Good360 stepped up in the same way and they are shipping those masks at no cost, you know, to all of the organizations who need them. So. Um, being open to dialogue about how we can work together, how we can join forces, how we can leverage our resources. I think that's that's the real opportunity right now. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. As I say, I could talk for for ages, but I think it's been really it's been really encouraging to to see the positivity that you've got about this. And uh, as you say, we pick ourselves up, we start again, uh, and, and we prosper going forward. So thank you ever so much. It's been a real pleasure as always. Thank and, you, uh, yeah, Gary. It's wonderful to talk to you. Great to see you too. Likewise. Take care. See you soon. Bye.